welcome back to innovation. You can see what I have done. I've left my program running for a little bit and I changed the speed to 0 0.001. You can go ahead and do that. And I left the variable up there so I could see that's what it was. And I let it running and I got lots and lots of dots. So the problem with this is that it's not all that interesting at this point to see all the dots once they've been created. It just kind of sits here. So what I think we need to put in here is a predator, something that's going to come around and eat up the dots as they're created. So we're going to create a new sprite. I'm going to hit stop here. And I'm going to choose a sprite this time. And I want to search for something simple. I'm going to find this crystal here. And I like the crystal because it can actually be two different kinds of crystals. And we're going to take advantage of that when we create our crystal code. So we're going to go down to our crystal. And we're going to do a similar thing where it clones itself. So we need to keep track of the crystal population. So we're gonna make a variable. And we're gonna call this crystal. Population. So now we're keeping track of the crystal population. We can hide that. I'm gonna hide my speed. So I'll have that stuff on the screen. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to control, excuse me, not control, events. And do when green flag clicked, I want to set my variable, the crystal population, to zero because there aren't any crystals yet. And I want to hide it because I want to control when that crystal shows up. And I'm going to put in a little for loop here, a forever loop under control. Inside that forever loop, what I wanna do is make something that will create a clone of the crystal. And I want a conditional. And if there are not enough crystals, we're gonna make it create a clone of itself. So we're gonna go to operators. Oops, wrong block. We want the less than block, if it's less than one. So if zero is less than one, right? Or negative is less than one. We want to create a clone of itself. We're going to go to control. And if population is less than one, we're going to create a clone of ourselves. Now, When it starts as a clone, we want to show it we want to set its size and we want it to kind of just glide around the screen. So we're going to go to control, put a forever loop here. And we're going to have a glide to a random location. I'm going to say it takes five seconds to do that. So now when I start as a clone, we're going to show and just glide around the screen. Now, the other thing we're going to have it do is we're going to have it make it look like it grows. So again, we're going to go to control. And when I start as a clone, because we want this to be separate from this event. We're going to do a change in population by one. So the population will go up by one every time it starts as a clone. We're going to do a forever loop. And we're going to check to see if it's touching a dot and put that inside here. If it's touching a dot, go to sensing. Where's my dot? 
Oh, I left. I don't know why Sprite One keeps going back to Sprite One. Let's just rename Sprite One and call it the dot. There we go. So if it's touching the dot, what I wanted to do is, is change its size by one. So it's going to get bigger. Now, if it's touching the matrix, we've got to give some kind of control in here to make it so it doesn't just get super, super big. So touching the matrix, we're going to go to sensing, drag that in there. We're going to go to looks and go to change its size by minus one okay now let's add another conditional in here but this time we're going to use an if else and an operator so 160 that's as big as we wanted to get so if it's size, their looks is bigger than 160, we want it to actually split off and become two other crystals. So to give an indicator of that, we're gonna switch the costume a crystal B, we're going to have it create a clone of itself twice, like it kind of blew up and popped in two separate crystals. Then we want it to wait 10 seconds. We're gonna to go to control, just to slow it down a little bit. Then we're going to change the crystal population by one, minus one, and delete itself. So after it gets bigger, kind of pops into other crystals, we want it to delete itself. control delete this clone now if it gets too small we're going to have it also delete itself but first let me go and the else should be switch to costume a okay So either it's going to be costume A or costume B, depending upon its size. So if the size is greater than 160, then it's going to be costume B. If the size is less than 160, it will be costume A. If the size is greater than 160, it's going to create a clone of itself twice, wait 10 seconds, and then just delete itself. Now, if the size of the crystal is too small, So let's say size is less than 50, we're also going to delete it. So we're going to change the population. By minus one, go to control. And delete this clone. So when I hit green flag we can see that we have our crystal moving around and our dot moving around and when the crystal touches the matrix it gets smaller and eventually a dot 
will start duplicating itself. And when the crystals run into the dots, it will get a little bigger. There's one problem in this is that nothing happens to the dots when our predators touch our dots, but we'll go ahead and fix that in the next lesson. That's all for now. See you next time.